Chicago, and my colonial name is Bernie Williams. We are a group of women, a collective of women that believe and fight uh, for the social injustice of all. We are here, you know, with Walk for Justice. There's Gladys Raddick who is here, and myself, and a few other walkers. We walked across Canada. We left on June 21st last year. I had to bring a message to Parliament that this violence against women is not acceptable. Because when our women become homeless, when our women become homeless, you know, and our children become homeless, they fall prey. They fall prey at the perpetrators, you know, as Picton. We need more housing. And that's why we are here to stand in solidarity with all of you. Because this is crimes against humanity. Crimes against humanity. I want to invite Carol Martin up here. Like I said, we, we are a group of women. We're out on the front lines you know, of these streets that they call Skid Row. I want to invite Carol Martin up here to speak. We have a real crisis here in BC with the Olympics coming up and all the billions of dollars that are going into the Olympics. Well, we say no more. We need homes. for being here today. My name is Gladys Raddick. I'm the uh, co-founder of the Walk for Justice. And the, the majority of the problem is poverty and no homes. They come to Vancouver because it's got a, a likable climate. If you're homeless in, in any other place across Canada, chances are you're going to die from exposure, or any of the other elements. Out here, they may, they may live a little bit longer, but a lot of them end up dying on the streets. And it's really sad to see that. We try to look for homes for them, but the, uh, the accessibility to homes is very limited. The rents are astronomically high. No place to shower, no place to go to the bathroom. These are crimes against humanity. Everybody deserves to have a roof over their head and food in their stomach, food for thought. Uh, my name is Delana Gail Bowen and on behalf of the, these women and the elders, I'm going to share a peace song with you. This is called the prayer song for peace. Think about peace within yourselves. Think about peace within your families, your communities, and hopefully this will carry through to the world. Calling the grandmothers and grandfathers.
Downtown Eastside Elders Council, Aboriginal Women's Action Network, Walk for Justice Working Committee, and the other elders. My name is Dave Deward. I'm an organizer with a group called Streams of Justice and a member of the Citywide Housing Coalition. What a great day for a march, huh? Today we are standing together in an affirmation of the essential importance of secure, adequate, and affordable housing for personal and communal health and well-being. Our first speaker today is going to be Laura Standard, an organizer with the Citywide Housing Coalition and a housing coordinator for the Jewish Family Services. Laura's gonna to explain to us more fully why we are here today. Laura. Hi. One of the things about us is that we actually are Citywide Housing Coalition, a nonpartisan group. And we will remain that way. But friends, just like you, I am here today because we have a disaster. In our city and throughout our province, we have thousands of people with no homes, thousands of people in danger of losing their homes, and thousands more spending so much money on rent that they can't afford to eat properly. We all know this is not a natural disaster. This is a 100% human-made disaster. And it comes from really three things. Our governments stopped building rental housing, social housing, they never built rental housing. Our income security programs, like seniors, pensions, welfare, employment insurance, disability, those got cut back, and if they didn't get cut back, they fell way behind the rising cost of living. Lastly, we didn't keep the rental housing we had. And if we still had the federal and provincial social housing programs from the 70s and 80s, we would not have this disaster. We would have 30,000 more affordable homes today. Because emergency shelters are not homes. New, safe, supported housing they have announced and re-announced over and over, it's still years away. Low-income families, seniors who value their, in, their independence, these people don't need supported housing. They just need homes they can afford. Residential tenancy laws must reflect Canada's agreement with the United Nations that housing is a right, not a privilege. <laughs> housing cannot be a market commodity where long-time tenants are evicted for minor renovations so their rents can be raised. And we must treasure, treasure the social housing we still have. Our job now is to use all our power to make sure that no matter who we elect to whatever government, they are crystal clear about their mission. Three things, folks social housing, ensure livable wages, and protect our homes.
talking about people's lives. Homelessness, the lack of social housing or inadequate income, and being in rental situations constantly under the threat of eviction all deeply impact the lives of real people in our city. I want to introduce to you Robert Milton, someone who has experienced homelessness, a member of the Carnegie Community Action Project, and he's going to share a bit with us now. Hi everybody, my name's Robert, and I'm homeless, and um, I'm really glad to see how much our people are here to support the homeless people. It gives me a little bit of hope of what I uh, might find in the future, and hopefully that's uh, social housing for all of us. A lot of us are homeless people that have been searching for homes for a long time. A couple of years, uh, a lot of us been here and many before me, before I even got to Vancouver, are homeless for even decades. Sorry my language, but um, it is very uh, frustrating to see that uh, it's a growing uh, problem and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to see many of you here to um, uh, create a, a solution for uh, many of us that are stuck out there on the street. We're called Headwater, thanks a lot for uh, being here. Here's a song called Francis. Alright, well we need a call to action. We need action. And Wendy Peterson from the Carnegie Community Action Project is going to ignite us all, fire us all up in her call for action. We need to replace the 5,000 homes in the downtown east side that are the, help, the, the hotels. We need homes for the 15,000 people across British Columbia who are homeless. And there are hundreds of thousands of people that are paying more rent than they can afford across this province. Excuse me, governments. This is, we need bold action. So people are here today from the lower mainland and Dave was listing off that there was 25 marches like this happening all over the province. Do you understand the scope of 25 towns and cities marching for to end homelessness? In Richmond, Comox Valley, Colwood, Cranbrook, Gibsons, Kamloops, Kelowna, Mission, Nanaimo, Nelson, Prince George, Princeton, Quinnell, Revelstoke, Seashell, Smithers, Terrace, and Victoria. And in Victoria, on their poster, they say they're going to march to the step of the legislature buildings and look at real affordable housing, BC style. <laughs> I thought that was funny. <laughs> paycheck away from homeless and those who live in unhealthy or unsafe or uncrowded conditions and we call in our governments no matter which government you belong to no matter which political party you belong to we call on you to build thousands of permanent social housing units every year in BC thousands we call on our governments to raise the minimum wage and welfare Protect rentals and renters. Yeah! And we call on you to end homelessness. Shelters are not enough. Housing's a human right. Yeah! And together you can all three levels of government can achieve those goals. Yeah!
this province for the last two years. We've had, at one point, we had 75 stands happen around the province. We can keep doing it, it's easy. And the idea of that, the idea for these stands came from Argentina, from the mothers of the disappeared, the, the women that wore their white scarves around their head and um, were protesting the abduction of their children by a corrupt government. And we, we do the same. That's why you see these turquoise scarves and the blue banners. And we're standing for all. And you could join those stands for housing.